In this part of the application of differentiation, we are going to be making use of differentiation to try to solve problems that require us to find the maximum values or the minimum values of a particular quantity. And in order for us to do so, we are going to make use of something that we have previously discussed. And that was when we tried to make use of differentiation to analyze the graph of y is equal to fx. And specifically for our session today, we're going to be analyzing when the graph is going to be experiencing a maximum point or a minimum point. And the common features about the maximum and minimum point will be when we try to draw a tangent to those points, we will realize that the tangents are going to be parallel to the x-axis. And when a line is parallel to the x-axis, the gradient is equal to zero. So if we were to make use of differentiation, we will find dy dx and we will let dy dx be equal to zero. And this will help us to locate the turning points. Please take note, we can locate the turning points, but we will not know whether the points are going to be maximum or minimum. In fact, it is even possible that it is a stationary point of inflection. That is why even after we have let dy dx be equal to zero, locating the turning points or locating the stationary points, we will still need to add in one more process, which is to justify find whether these points that we have found are really a maximum point or a minimum point. We have also discussed that previously. That was when we were trying to make use of either the first derivative test or the second derivative test to check whether it is going to be a maximum point or minimum point or a stationary point of inflection. For a first derivative test, we simply want to make use of um, dy dx to analyze the slope of the tangent. So if we were to realize that at the place where the turning point happened, the slope is going to be like this. Before the turning point, it's going to be like this. At the turning point, the slope of the tangent. And after that, it's going to be like this. Then we know it is going to be a maximum point. The same goes for a minimum point. So this will be if we were to make use of the first derivative test. And if you want to make use of the second derivative test, I think it is also very straightforward. The rule says that if I were to find d square y dx square and letting x be equal to a, that is when the stationary point happened. So when x is equal to a, I will analyze the value of d square y dx square. If it is less than zero, then it is a maximum point. If it is bigger than zero, it is a minimum point. If you find yourself not that familiar with what I'm talking about here, Please revisit what we have taught previously. But if you are ready, let's take a look at a question together. And it is this question where the diagram is already here that I've drawn on the board. It is also here. So according to what the question says, for this, we are looking at a cross section of a hollow cone. And for this cone, it has a height of 30 and it has a base radius of 12. And within this cone, there is a solid cylinder. And for this cylinder, this is the cylinder. For this cylinder, it has a radius of r and it has a height of h. And both stand on the same horizontal surface. And the upper edge, up, upper circular edge of the cylinder, which is these two edges here, okay? The upper edges of the cylinder is in contact with the cone. We want to express h in terms of r and then hence, Okay, so we are going to be making use of this h in terms of r thing to try to show that v, which is the volume of the cylinder, is equal to that expression over there. So let's try to achieve our first aim, which is to find h in terms of r. And to do that, I'm going to make use of this triangle and this triangle. And I'm going to be applying similar triangle. Okay, let me just redraw these two triangles so they can see how I'm applying similar triangle to find a relationship between H and R. So for this big triangle, let me just draw it here. So let's say it is this. Okay, and for this triangle here, let me draw it as this. And according to what the question says, this length here is R. And this length here is 12. The height of the big, big triangle is 30. So here, this is 30. And how about this, the height of the smaller triangle? But the height of the smaller triangle is going to be 30 minus h, which is the height of the cylinder. So this is going to be 30 minus h, which means that if I were to apply similar triangle, why are they similar? Because this is 90 degrees for the small triangle, and this is also 90 degrees for the big triangle and they share a common angle here. So they are similar by A similarity. So since they are similar triangles, if I were to find the ratio between this and this, let's say R over 12, this is going to be the same as the ratio between this and this. So it's going to be 30 minus H over 30. So 
30 r over 12 this is going to be equal to 30 minus h so h here is going to be equal to 30 minus this will be 5 over 2 r h is equal to this and um, okay we have already successfully achieved the first thing that the question wants us to do and hence we are supposed to find the volume in terms of r what is the volume of a cylinder volume of a cylinder is pi r square h so let me quote it here volume is pi r square h but the question wants the volume to be expressed in terms of just r so i'm going to replace this h here by what we have found this is 30 minus 5 over 2 r and this is what the question wants us to show nice next we are going to try to find the volume of the largest possible cylinder that can be residing within the cone okay please take note that this cylinder is such that the edges are going to be on in contact with the cone okay so for the volume of the largest cylinder that can be within the cone and v is equal to this okay we, we can imagine it using what we have previously discussed so if we were to be sketching a graph for example okay we will be expecting for this graph let's say this is v this is r we will be trying to find this point here okay a point where v is experiencing the maximum possible point so to do this what is happening here the tangent is going to be parallel to the r axis and what is the tangent dv dr so we're going to find dv dr and should i just differentiate this directly i don't think so because if i were to differentiate this expression with respect to r we will need to do a product rule okay and that is unnecessarily tedious because we can just do a simple manipulation to this by multiplying r square in and that will give me 30 r square minus 5 over 2 r to the power of 3 and now this is really easy to differentiate so dv dr this is going to be equal to pi of 30 of 2r minus 5 over 2 of 3r square and this will be pi of um this is equal to 60r minus this this is going to be equal to 15 over 2r square and uh in fact we can even factorize out 15r so let me do that 15 pi r this is going to be equal to 4 and this will be half r okay and this is dv dr and specifically at this point the gradient must be zero because the tangent is going to be parallel to the r axis so we are going to let dv dr be equal to zero in order for us to locate where exactly is this maximum point where exactly is the maximum v occurring so by letting dv dr be equal to zero it will be 15 pi r 4 minus 1 over 2 r you'll be letting this be equal to zero which means that r must be equal to zero or four minus half r must be equal to zero this tells me that r is equal to eight can r be equal to zero of course not if r is equal to zero we don't even have a cylinder at all so r is equal to zero will definitely not give me the largest possible cylinder it will just give me no cylinder at all which means that r is equal to eight is going to get me a maximum cylinder nah i i or at least from what we have so far right we cannot conclude yet that when r is equal to 8 the volume or the or the cylinder is the largest possible why again concept wise when we try to let dv dr be equal to zero we have found the stationary point but a stationary point can be a maximum point minimum point or a stationary point of inflection that is why it is important for us to know that in our solution we need to justify okay this is necessary we need to justify whether this stationary point is a maximum point according to what the question wants us to find so in order for us to do that we can either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test i think second derivative test is actually pretty straightforward for this so let me apply the second derivative test and to do that i need d square v dr square so let's take this expression here this one this is easier to differentiate let's take this expression here for dv dr and we will differentiate this again which will then give me d square v dr square so differentiating this this will be pi 60 minus away 15 r so when r is equal to 8 
when r is equal to 8. Let's try to look at the value for d squared v dr squared because if this value is less than 0, then we will know that the v is experiencing a maximum possible value. So let's see, this is going to be equal to pi of 60 minus 15 times r and that is when r is equal to 8. This gives us a minus 60 pi and here it goes it is less than zero therefore we can say that v is experiencing its maximum value and the question will require us to give this value give the volume when the cylinder is going to be the maximum possible the largest possible so the maximum possible or the largest possible volume is going to be when r is equal to eight the volume is this okay so it is going to be equal to pi of 30 times r which is 8 so 8 square minus 5 over 2 r which is 8 to the power of 3 the maximum possible volume is equal to 640 pi and of course we can also choose to try to make use of the first derivative test if we were to make use of the first derivative test then instead of doing this from here after we have gotten r is equal to 8 we're going to build for ourselves a table and in this table, we will be analyzing for the value of r, what is the sign of the gradient, and then we will look at the shape of the tangent of v. So when r is equal to 8, what is dv dr? This has to be equal to 0 because that was how we derived it from the very beginning, you know, when we let dv dr be equal to 0. So what we want to analyze is a value that is slightly less than 8 when r is slightly less than 8, for example, 7.9. So I will substitute 7.9 back into the expression for dv dr. Okay, I'll let, let all this r here be 7.9. I will press it into the calculator. You should get a positive value. So I'm going to put a plus here. Then we are going to analyze what if I'm looking at the part that is slightly after 8 when r is slightly bigger than 8, for example, 8.1. So replacing this r here by 8.1, pressing into the calculator, I will be getting a negative value. So I'm going to put a sign as negative here, which means that for the shape of the tangent, for v, positive gradient is going to be this shape. 0 is going to be horizontal. Negative gradient is going to be this shape. So the shape tells me that it is experiencing a maximum point. Then from here, I can then try to calculate for the maximum possible value of V, and that is when R is equal to 8. In summary, when we are seeing question that is like this, what we can do is a few steps that I'm trying to highlight here. So let me just very quickly run through this. Basically, we have already done so, okay? So the first thing that we want to do is, of course, to identify according to what the question has described to us, the quantity where we are supposed to maximize or minimize. For example, y, or for example, in this case, v. Then we want to express y, which is the quantity that we are supposed to maximize, in terms of just one variable. So in this case, we are trying to express v in terms of just one variable. In the beginning, v was in terms of two variables, r and h. But if v is in terms of r and h, we don't know how to differentiate it because the next step that we need to do is differentiation. We will find dy dx, and in this case, like what we have done, dv dr. And then we will let dy dx be equal to zero, like what we have discussed. We are trying to analyze the turning points, so we are going to let dv dr be equal to zero. And we're going to find the value of x when this stationary point occur. And please take note, we are talking about stationary point, but the question is asking for maximum or minimum. So this is not enough. So step five here is crucial. Step five, we want to make sure that we check whether this stationary point is a maximal or a minimal. And we can make use of either the second derivative test, which was what we did previously, or we can also make use of the first derivative test. And because very often we will be looking at a scenario where a shape is being involved or a solid is being involved. That is why I am giving you this table over here. I think this table is going to be very useful. It's going to be useful for maximum minimal question. And if you have done enough practice, you'll realize that this, this, this uh, formulas here, okay, this mensuration formulas that gives you uh, volumes and surface area, it is also pretty useful for rate of change question. And I'm done with what I've planned to discuss with you. And I'll see you in the next chapter.